Hello, hello everyone. So I'm gonna start doing some look at my D3 PTR 2.7.3 assumptions um, based on what I uh, am going to be reading. That that is what I assume might happen, and I could be totally wrong about it. But we will find out, uh, you know, in the next few days and see if that's what they planned and whether it will change, which it it wouldn't change drastically, they'll just be fixing it. So it'll be interesting to see if I got some guesses or assumptions correct. So here we have the PTR 2.7.3. It finally dropped in. Um, my friends and I were, you know, talking about how what they could be doing um and there were a lot of different you know ideas bounced around and one of the ones that i wanna what i really want to talk about is the gr stuff that this is a remnant from this season 25 onto season 26 with a slight variation in terms of the augmentation um, going into the next season. And it may not be as clear as it says there, but that's what I was going to get into after my actual starting topic. Now let's jump into where I want to start. And this has a lot to do with my style of um pushing gear uh pushing gr riffs well i repeat the r but pushing grs so my style of pushing grs has uh, been twofold one based on this the s tier and a tier i usually play between those two or even my skill bar or my skill choices, or like my cube choice, uh, uh, slot choices, will turn it into an in between, or it could be like right below A tier because I don't use conventional elements in my god EH, for example, because I like a more chaotic pulling density style to where I want to be able to handle between three to five elites depending on whether I have that organized. Um, cluster or the density clusters that I can find in order to do that, to build that. And this is what it's leading into what they just put in here. So these greater rift updates, I'm going to read Oryx Dream. Greater rifts have a small chance to roll as Oryx Dream. These dreamlike rifts have a curated list of maps and monster compositions. So without even going further down what I've pulled up here. Now, this is this gets really interesting because for me, when I push, first of all, when I set the twofold, one, I do zero augments for up until a certain point based on the S tier or A tier. So what it means is that I try to push usually up to about 115 without augments. And then if it's S tier, I push to a 120 without augments. If I'm pretty good or pretty well practiced with the set, with the skills, I should be able to do it without augments. And that's the solo um, pushing challenge that I usually uh, place for myself for each of the seasons starting from season 21 onwards that I've been doing that. And then I also play whatever that's given to me. So let's say the first key, first GR key that I opened a GR 120 or a 121, let's just say 121 because 120 seems to be, you know, average. So 121, I open it up. And I got like a spaghetti, for example, 
and not many people like spaghetti. Well, it doesn't matter what it is. I still go for it. Now, the only things that are holding me back are like, for example, fire shamans that spawn that oh, that usually hurt the, the uptime of my squirt necklace. And that will cause a lot of damage loss. I know 121 is still, you know, relatively... Well, I don't want to say easy, but good enough for certain paragons and certain people who can do it. Now, what I was getting at is that spaghetti, if it's fire shamans, it's terrible. So it's more of the monster types. And that's what, you know, if you have gone ahead to read, it's talking about different monster types that would give some, um, some better percent progression of your progress bar. Now, I didn't really mind spaghetti all that much most of the time. It's still the monster types that matter. Now, when it's, they say about curated list of maps, um, I want to show you my clip. Well, maybe it's going to be kind of long to show it. But I'm going to try my best to jump ahead uh, every like two minutes or every section or every floor to show you what I got that was kind of interesting that is kind of like the halfway point in between agreeing with what this PTR 2.7.3 has for us and partly agree, uh, disagree. So uh, it, it agrees to, to some extent and disagrees to some extent, meaning that it all comes down to your play style, whether you are actually looking for simply the best maps and maybe you also roll the best monster types or you could, or you're the type of person that plays whatever you get. And this is what I got. And it seemed like a very drastic, um, far fetched spectrum between a good, like a good map, like a, the ideal map, but it actually does worse than the bad maps that are such as spaghetti. So here I'm going to like start the video and let me, I guess, let's go ahead and um, resize for the purpose of understanding what I'm getting at. So what I was getting at is that I did a push about, what is it, like two weeks, two weeks ago. I, I, I didn't, I, I, I guess I shouldn't say I did a, uh, I, I did a push. I actually failed it 11 different times, but this third try was really, really close. And there are a lot of different parts where I could have improved and I would have done it by like 1450 something like 1451 or or something like that because there were some situations where I I lost time because I was setting things up and um I mean I was doing things on the fly okay so let's go ahead and take a look So with that map being terrible, and I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but does it need to pack counts that you want to get a push like relatively high? So let's see. Okay, so here I got spaghetti. Uh, so who ordered who ordered the spaghetti for me? I mean, I would love to have. Ooh, okay. Um, this is interesting. Now, let's see if I have the damage to do this. Now, I would want those to turn into balls. And I want to kill all the Safari. Now, okay. 
So here, I got the spaghetti map, right? The the winding, whatever it is. Okay. So so far, it seems like I know what I'm doing with certain monster types. And again, I didn't really, really want to just talk about jump ahead into monster types, but this map, I don't mind it so much. It has reasonable stuff going on. So here, I think I can do okay with this. So let's jump ahead. So far, my progress is still a little behind, but that's very common for a map like this. And also, sometimes when you do a push, now what GR is this? This is GR131 for God DH that fell half a tier, so to speak, uh, from Season 24 down to Season 25 because the loss of using a two-hander, unless you actually choose to use a two-hander, then you might drop only a few levels if your two-hander is really good and you know what you're doing with it. And if you're playing maybe Odyssey's End or something like that, then obviously you have that percent damage. And, you know, the variation of what you're doing is top end that you mimic very closely or even better than last season. But in any case, I'm playing it as though it was the season's past. And I don't use COE. I don't use convention. So I'm short on damage, but I got really close. As you can see the title of this video, it says 15 minutes and 23 seconds. So without COE, I got very close. And there will be elements where I could have, you know, saved and cut time. But it's not a dream rift or something where... It was not the, the best, but I could have done it, I guess, if it was the lower end of a spectrum of a Dream Rift, although they're cutting the maps, um, I guess, from what it says. And if, if that's what the map that's cut, then even better. Then that means without this particular map, the other maps of whatever Dream Ideal Rift that comes by would be easily 1459 and much uh, shorter in duration, which means I would have successfully pushed my GR uh, 131, for example. So let's go ahead and skip ahead again. So I'm like down to tr trying to pull more packs around this conduit and you see, it has a sender conduit, just like conduit pylon, just like a festering. So I'm here trying to find elite packs. And I think there are like one or two right now. And I, I think the engage text at the bottom left at this moment, I, I think I saw a third one and it was a blue, but it was probably really far away and I didn't. And I don't think I could pull it. So it didn't, it didn't pop up. I was trying to find it. It's actually later that I, I see it because it's actually a, a monster type that is rather immobile anyway. So here I lost a lot of time because I was trying to understand where the blue was and I finally decided to click the conduit because the the, 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 the yellow elites are all here, basically. So in, including the one I've spawned from the pylon. So here I'm going to be able to regain my time, right? As a spaghetti that... Uh, has a conduit in the center. Now that doesn't happen very often. I even, uh, even in season 22, I had a spaghetti map that there were only disembodied hulks that I could pull together. And here I'm trying to find what the blue I was missing. Obviously I, I went the wrong way, so I wasted like eight seconds there. And then finally, I see the blue that I engaged. This is what I was taught, what I was getting ahead of myself here because I know I I kind of remembered my video because I did the I did the gr push, uh, a failed one. So that that was the blue that I was expecting to have um, supported me while I was at the 
at the conduit pylon. So here I, I got a spaghetti, a floor one spaghetti. It I I, I made back my time with a, a, a bigger play, a bigger play on the pylon, right? So this is this is what I was getting at with the GR uh possible PTR stuff where the monster types, the monster compositions will be have always been reasonable enough if you get the ones you understand which are good the map itself the layout is bad because the traversing through it is frustrating so for example if you get keep depths the barracks that's even worse oh look at this i got a second spaghetti now when they say curated list of maps what i think or what i assume it means is that oh okay before I even go there so earlier right right as I entered the uh, so let's let's go back just a little bit it might be a little bit that before I go to the second floor again okay so what I mean by curated maps and before I talk about it let's pause right there okay so I got a power pylon on the second at the start of this spaghetti now this is not ideal you don't want to see your next pylon either at the end of the floor without an elite pack aside from the spawning one that after you click obviously or you you don't really want to see it starting on a poor traversing map because you don't know if you can cut time at all with this outside of killing the elite now my decision making uh, my decision making was not to press it immediately now there, there are two ways that this could go wrong the spawning one could be easy and I would have, and I clearly wasted time because of this 23 seconds that I uh, 24 seconds that I missed as the title says so the eight seconds that I went the wrong way, even though I've already checked um, a little bit of the corner, plus this eight seconds that I went past the pylon and not click it immediately, like as though it's a speed GR, that's another 16 seconds that I could have saved, depending on what it spawned, right? So. If it spawned a missile dampening, that means I definitely could have cut 24 seconds in total. That's definitely true, because missile dampening is still pretty okay with the the, the cap of the skill that turned it down by half a tier um, for the several seasons that it happened. So, what's the what's the issue now? Is that how much progress can I make with this second floor? And I'm going to go back again to the PTR notes. It says that or extreme greater rifts have a small chance to roll as or extreme. These dreamlike rifts have a curated list of maps. So I just got in this one two spaghettis. This is the second spaghetti floor, second floor spaghetti. Now I'm gonna play this out. So I saw a blue elite there, and I'm trying to find another one so that I can bring it back or maybe pull both together to try to buy some time. So let's see, I got spinners. I spawned spinners. And I know that power pylon, I should be able to take the spinners out, but I didn't wanna risk that because my also my other play style is that I don't want to get proc or you know rip because those few seconds could really hurt me and they usually do so now here I decided to skip the the, the spawn one so that's another on the fly decision making that could that could have cost me because I could have probably killed those spinners like nothing which it's usually true but in the positioning of this map it's hard to tell whether I would go too close to the spinners because it's a narrow, you know, path. Now I got a speed pylon and you can see that again it's grotesques while I was talking 
I, I, I got grotesque in this spaghetti second floor. Now, grotesque is also not terrible in terms of, you know, monster composition for progression. So you can see that I'm still maintaining time because the, the monster type is fantastic. So it really has not as much as you would think to do with the maps. You know, sometimes you could just play out the maps. Now, at the end of the GR, hindsight tells you that I shouldn't even have wasted my time at all because when you see two spaghetti maps, it's really most likely that you won't make it, right? So that's hindsight though. I assumed that I could have done it every single time I open a GR outside of spawning fire shamans, especially fire shamans. That is one that I normally would have to skip almost the entire floor and waste a minute. And that's not even the, that, that's way beyond what I was talking about, the eight seconds that I went to a dead end um, and then eight seconds that I went back to the uh, went back to the power pylon instead of clicking it, and if it spawned a you know a better affix, easier uh, adds that I could have done that power pylon better. So that would have saved me forty seconds. But a map with fire shamans based on progression would have owed me one minute or more. So here I got my fourth pylon, fourth, yeah, I think so, right? Conduit power speed and channel yes so four so i'm still very much ahead and with this with this amount of time i mean it looks like i would be able to complete it it's very like it's very very possible it's this is very close to a quote i guess dream rift in a sense that this is a spaghetti but a double spaghetti but the time is not, you know, far on the page that you would normally see for a double spaghetti, which is why maps are such a concern. But here, although the sample size is very small, being just one push, I can also go back and show you from a season's past that I did do a GR 128 or 129 it was, that floor 2 was a spaghetti and it had this embodied hulks and I played the center tile just like that conduit there in the center on the previous floor. I did that same thing and I managed to buy myself as though it was almost two elite packs with about 10 to 12 hulks. So spaghetti as a map isn't only the issue and they did you know, tie it both between maps and monster compositions. So with the two combined, it does make sense. But if we were just talking about curated list of maps, it spaghetti is not like as detrimental as one might think. But anyway, what the curated list of maps in this patch notes may be talking about or what we want to think of it is let's see what my third floor is. So my third floor is even worse. Way worse than the two spaghetti floors, right? So first floor spaghetti, second floor spaghetti, third floor, whatever you call this. I just call it like those, um, well, if it was the green one, I call it the forest winding cave. So whatever this is, this is the winding cave. Okay, or or I just call it cave in general because I, on the fly during the GR, you have no time to recall the name of the bad, the, the really extremely bad ones. The, they're all caves. Okay, so I got this one with the succubi and like uh, the I call them the Venom Lords. You know, because I played Diablo 2. I come from Diablo 2. So I call them Venom Lords. But the, the name is there. And you, you can call it what's there. So with this progress bar, I should still be able to do it. I should still be able to kill the Rift Guardian, depending on what it is. 
So it's quote curated list of maps. So what what is the, this curated list of maps? And let's look into what they're adding. They're adding fields of misery, desolate sands, and a cemetery. And they're removing, well, just like caves, but it's the sewers and the waterway. As far as that's how I understand the names, because we often chop down the official names into terminologies or memes, you know, like spaghetti for the previous floor, two floors that I got. So there's all these different naming um, of these maps, you know, like I called the Act 2 one, the Act 2 open area, Desert Hill Top or something like that. So there are names that don't relate to the official names. However, so curated list of maps. What what can we say about this? Well, in this GR example push that I failed, 1523, I got spaghetti, spaghetti, and this, this cave, this particular kind of cave. Curate a list of maps in a dream-like rift would mean that, this is my assumption, it would mean that it's festering on floor one. So, now, when they say Oryx dream, even like right there in bold, it's probably meaning that once you enter the rift, if you're paying attention, it will usually have like a big word title of the floor of, of, of your spawn like rift. And then in the top right corner, if you see carefully, um, I guess. I guess it's more in the regular rift that you see that, right? I'm um, trying to... But like, on the top right, I think it, on the regular rift, you will see the names of the floors. Uh, of, of the, of the like, the, the random titling of like, this is floor one, uh, this name of floor two, it's on the top right. So I'm not entirely sure how they would how they would do this in terms of making it clear to players about Oryx Dream. The other way that it would be much more clear for Oryx Dream, and we will see uh, in a few days, uh, whether at the entrance, maybe Oryx, like you will see the, uh, the head of Oryx as a shadow or or the entrance could be a a, a fancier thing like I, I i don't i don't want to like make turn it into a very negative thing but you know how when you enter the um, the ringo Bo goblin place the whimsy dale or the whimsy shire it looks like totally different and that's like cutesy different now or extreme could could make the entrance like like you know the the mountain or the door in in a different like different um, what's the word like the structure the infrastructure so it could be you know like a like for example christmas lights and like whatever like it could be really fancy that or it could be like a dream like state kind of entrance so it's like you feel you, you you feel like it's blurry well i don't want to like make them look something blurry but but it could be like something really blurry and then it it looks like a, you went into a dream like or, or like initially the start it would be like as your eyes begin to open in a shadowy world that kind of thing where you see in the in the movies or TV shows and whatnot. So there could be a lot of fancy possibilities to like if you're paying attention. But that's just paying attention to opening GRs though. So it depends on whether you're two hours or six hours in of your 
rift attempts that you're focused or not in terms of their clarity of representing what is an oric stream. So we will find out down the road. But the curated list of maps, so floor one, Festering Woods. Floor two could be Battlefield. Floor three could be Spire. Or the best of the best, double festering. Double um, fields of, uh, double battlefield. It could be that too. So that could be the curated list of maps. Now, what does that say? To summarize what I just did, we can consider this. Isn't this very similar to a challenge rift in, 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 in terms of like we playing a snapshot of ideal rifts in combination of the maps? So basically adding into how monster types have certain progression. Right, so they give certain progression, which means that in percent terms, curated list of maps and monster compositions in percentage numbers, it really means that I, I, I think I would take it as far as even back in season, like maybe the first few seasons, I think it's probably between one and two or one to three, where it was really difficult to complete a GR properly because you would think that you are able to skip certain elite packs, but that would cost you down the road that you end up at the end pylon because there's a limited amount of percentage in numbers. If you if you take out all the animations and the you know the the bodies of different monster types. Just treat every monster that spawns in your rift as a percentage number or like, you know, a browser game. So treat everything as a percentage. If you kill a monster or if you kill a, a, a numbered text on your screen, it that adds up to your progress bar. You know, just treat it as that, which means that in a Dreamlight rift, each floor has a total percentage that you would have accumulated, right? And we assume that you clean out, like, let's say, just like this double spaghetti, I cleaned out pretty much 88%. Or I guess it's maybe 90% there. I, I, I'm not going to, like, go right into, like, the exact percent now because it's done deal i've already failed that gr 131 attempt but as you can see my progress bar is purple like way ahead of time it's probably like two minutes ahead if not three okay with double spaghetti so my progress percentage is really high based on what i did perform in the two previous floors which really says that curated list of maps is how you would handle, how one would handle that, that floor and how much you're skipping and not skipping. Now, if we think about curated list of maps also, it would also mean that no matter how much you skip, let's say this curated list of maps, there's like seven to eight maps that are like pretty good in, in, in the order of preference. Obviously, Festering Woods is the, gonna be the, at the top or the Godly Spire, right? The, 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 the circular spire that you can like pull seven to eight elite packs or even get Terror Demon um, stuff that you can do or Brood Mothers, um, that kind of uh, monster types you can um, gain prog progress with. And so, like, imagine that 
you got eight floors. So no matter how much you skip, do you think that from your practice that you skip certain floors? So this curated list of maps will just keep going in down the line of these eight maps in its random order. Alongside that, with good monster types. And it will have a list of 10 monster types that are like in order of the best or not. And they will randomize through that. So, floor 1, Festering. Floor 2, Battlefield. Floor 3, Spire. Floor 4 could be Desert Hilltop. And then floor 4, 5, whatever, could be another Festering. So, if, it, if you're really struggling, you go down however far, you're going to be still cycling through the best maps and the, the reasonable top 10 monster types. I think that's what this curated list of maps and monster composition is talking about. But how clear is it for people uh, to see and make use of these ones depend on, I guess, if we go by speed of clearing GRs, even in the speed GRs, you will probably see these or dream like rips so then so then it's like maybe a quote waste because you're doing too many of these in your speed ones so that's the own that, that's like one of the downsides but you will figure out that by then you would have observed that it is indeed a dreamlike rift which is actually handy for your push which takes up to another perspective that might be totally not the case. And this is coming from ideas that have gone through different streamers. And uh, I've only watched like one or two other streamers uh, discussing this um, yesterday. And what if we kind of assume that these auric dreams are like, are, are going to be like, keys but when we think of that though if if you've played diablo 3 from a long time ago from since the start uh if i recall correctly there are these time trials right so if you turn these these auric dreams into a key or or, or something which it's not very likely but let's assume that from these streamers that we kind of Assume that the discussion has gone that far into turning it into a possibility of a key kind of direction, which cuts into farming more keys. But at the same time, these auric dreams would be, quote, wasteful, right? Like I mentioned just before I talked about discussions of other streamers con combined so that I'm not taking credit for the key concept because the key concept is really just like the time trials from Diablo 3 a long time ago so like how wasteful is it for certain people who keep opening GRs right and I could totally be misrepresenting or misreading what these auric dreams are right it's more possible that there's a chance that when you open your highest GR, um, your next GR, your next basically the one that you need to push, has a smaller has a small chance to spawn as a dream. So, or it could just be during speed GRs that you know you cycle through the one. Let let's say it's let's say it's a 1% chance, right? Let's say it's a 1% chance that you spawn this Oryx stream. Then, after 100 to 150 GR, speed GRs, you stumble upon one, but you're doing your speed GRs in, in, that, in that window of your 100 to 150 GRs. You're doing all speed GRs. So, is that what Oryx stream is? 
or that you know whenever you're opening a tough one that it kind of gives that hidden you know um how do we say it like a cumulative it, it um how how do we put it um in 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 like a good way to to explain this uh basically imagine like you upgrading your gems um the 60% is not totally 60% but imagine if you're doing your gr pushes you open a rift so these auric dreams you suddenly stumble upon them while you're doing your push will it be while doing pushes or while or like is it going to be super wasteful in terms of speed grs so then this also changes a bit of the the play style that we're going to have is that for one i always or usually would tell people that especially if you're preparing to push you should do a warm up um if you're the kind that needs a warm up you should do a warm up that's like in between or like when you do your speed grs don't just do it like the lowest for the drops like the max drops so the 90s right i mean if you're still gearing and you're low on gold yes that's your objective though the objective is to spend the least amount of gold in order to prepare your augments in the traditional way outside of this season 25 and the next one right depending on whether you want to use the whisper of atonement in the next one and whether it's it fits the the style that you want to play right i don't know how much of it is going to be working out but that's the next thing i will talk about and this is where after this or extremes are spent on your speed GRs, it's better that you play the middle ground between your perfectly fast speed GRs versus your pushes. You should do the middle, a middle ground. And why do I mention the middle ground? Is because you want to kind of test these auric dreams based on what you would have, you could do for your pushes which means that you don't want to open the all your speed grs and end up using your first small chance of the or extreme now we don't know how frequent people are going to be how fast people are going to go through right i mean i guess from what we know that speed grs are like between one to three minutes so how many of these between 100 to 200 to 300 speed grs people are pulling off that it triggers that small chance faster or slower uh, depending on the RNG right which also means that if you're just doing the very minimum GR for your gems if you're already very rich in gold that just means that you're you may not be taking very much use or advantage of that possibility that you spawn a an or extreme for your push so i mean even if you open a middle ground let's say a 110 and you already pushed a 120 i mean opening an or extreme for your 110 is still better feeling than opening a gr90 for an or extreme right i mean I, i'm this is just me assuming that you stumble upon or extreme those dreamlike riffs during your speed runs, which is going to happen. It's going to happen if that's what it is, if that's how it is. Um, so, so yeah, um, I think I've exhausted this curated list of maps. Again, curated list of maps for me, there's two meanings. One, I assume that it's going to be floor one, uh, festering woods or uh, battlefield. And then floor two, it could be a godly spire or one of the three that I just mentioned and whatever godly maps that you can think of are going to be in this curated list of maps and they just cycle through them 
or you can get double of the same ones, just like how I got double spaghetti, but obviously not spaghetti. So the good ones, double, double spire, double festering, double battlefield, those those doubling or tripling it up. Just like imagine if whimsy, if whimsy shire or whimsy dale kept spawning, basically the same map. So like you just get whimsy dale like for one whimsy dale for two whimsy dale. Um, and so on. So it looks the same, basically. You, you you get the same repetition in terms of the curated list of maps. So I hope you guys enjoyed that segment of curated maps and monster types. I know that I didn't really talk too much about monster types, but they're on the screen, most of them. Um, and if you have practiced with certain monster types that you know that are reasonable to, to take down for uh, increasing your progression, uh, while you're doing your GR pushes, then go ahead. This will definitely help you. But if you're the ones that only play the tamer ones, then this will make you, you know, work a little harder. Um, starting to like memorize, quote memorize, which are, you know, now more improved for your pushes because now some of these aren't as tame some of these are like you know blazing guardians for example if if the blazing guardians adjustment there at the very top is a reasonable adjustment but blazing guardians if there's like nine of them and they're like scattered really far away and if 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 you're not playing well if you're not playing something that pulls them together um then you may have a harder time in taking advantage and then you'll still not take advantage of that small adjustment that they did whether it's helpful or not that's going to be tested right so it depends on the class and the build that you're doing in terms of fighting blazing guardians and that how you used to one used to uh push without playing against these certain monster types because they hurt because they deal a lot of damage to you in the higher GRs. So normally you would skip them or avoid them, but now that they might have adjusted the numbers a bit more that, you know, it might be what, 0.6% each instead of 0.3, perhaps. I mean, it's not going to be that drastic, maybe, maybe 0.5. So like instead of from 0.3, it goes up to 0.5 for Blazing Guardians. So then you would, consider these nine blazing guardians as you know a possibility 0.5 is still really high but i'm just giving some numbers some random numbers that you know if you kill like you know nine blazing guardians that's like basically a, a blue elites that scattered like that that scattered on you so like they ran in different directions and you spent some time so even though it's 0.5 sounds like a really big number but if they're like scattered all over and you're not playing a build that pulls them together or that they keep walking apart or separating that you're still losing time so it's 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 that opportunity whether that percent will help you that mimics as though you fought an elite pack right so that's your own advantage based on what build you're doing and what class you're playing okay so I've totally exhausted that. Let's uh and I know I can go on for like an hour for each for each one. I like to attempt or some people like to attempt their pushes all the way through. Um at least one or two of them, not consistently and consequently for a whole 2 hours. Well, I've done that before, but like I've gone down to floor 8, uh 7 and 8 and they were both festering woods. So if you think about floor seven and eight, right, that also talks about what curated list of maps is like early on when I was talking about that, is that instead of the festering woods appearing again in floor seven and eight, so let's say your let's say your first floor was festering woods, right, and for some reason it was bad. So let me let me go let me I mean. When I was showing this video, 
I was going to show actually um, one issue that happened. One thing that happened, okay, was that I actually got Festering Woods in one of my, in in next couple of uh, pushes out of the 11. It might be my seventh attempt or something like that, or eighth, one, eighth uh, run out of this 11. Okay, it's not that one. I'm trying to find it. Is this it? I think so. No, wait, is it? No. Okay, I think it's this one. I'm trying to... Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so I got this. It's the Festering Woods. I didn't show it earlier because I kind of was trying to race through my topic, but I actually spent like an hour total going through curated list of maps. And I, I was talking up so much about my double spaghetti that I was going to go into this Festering Woods video. Uh, I mean, this, this little section of comparison by comparison so let's let's go back let's see 138 26 i mean i can just start here and and let you see how bad this festering woods is so I got Festering Woods with Bogan Trappers, but not the Bogan Charger. Because if I got Bogan Chargers... Why I don't care about the map so much. Exactly. Time is with. Exactly. With that, this Bogan Progression sucks. Yep. Yep, exactly. I should not bother killing them, but like... Okay, so here's an elite. The general rule that I go for is that I had to kill like the first skill or density. Yeah, which says a lot, right? If you need to kill the first density, you know what the mob types are, you're going to back out. So, normally, this is like a back out moment already. For most people that go up, go with like Festering Woods, they're like, okay, I got a good, I got the, the ideal map. But what, what, are, what are the mob types and whether I can play upon a pylon, a center pylon that I really want. And unfortunately, with Bogan Trappers like that, it's very unlikely. Right? Very, very unlikely. So they would back out immediately. But but then again, you think about this. It's a festering woods. It's a map that you want. So based on maps alone, it is in the top list. The top five. Top three. You know? You can't ignore it because this is my eighth, seventh or eighth run. You know, it, it's been... It's been, te I mean, eight is like a very, very small number. People run like 200, 200 to 500 runs before they get, you know, a reasonable festering woods, right? But I got this like really terrible one after the double spaghetti. And how would you feel if the double spaghetti was better than a festering? It's just so disappointing. So I'm not actually worried about dropping them right now. The only reason to drop them is if I want to like understand that I'm gonna get a pylon um sooner. But I'm actually not too worried, although they might split apart and not follow properly. The only other issue I have with this specific bugs. Well, Bugs will also follow me, but the problem with this current spawn is that I'm not too worried about what the pylon is. The bad news is that this festering woods at this point is not the ideal, you know, 75 to 80% clear 
Exactly. Which, you know, and I'm saying these things as I was doing the GR, right? As the as I was doing the pushes, and this is and this is what I do. So this is what I do, right? I analyze the percentage of what I can do based on what I got, and obviously, people would have backed out already. And yes, I will back out eventually. But I really wanted to see what a really terrible Festering Woods is like. Because this is terrible. This is very bad. Okay, this is like a one of the worst I've ever seen of a Festering. Like, this is just one of the worst. It's, it's, it could, there could be an, a worse, an even worse one. But this is the, the one that is, like, extremely terrible. I mean, unless you're an elite hunter, I would say that this, you might gain a little bit more progress. But it would still be, like, in the 40% range. So, if you're an elite hunter, I think, in hindsight, this should be about a 40% festering. But when you see a festering, you don't want 40%. An ideal festering, just like the dream-like rifts that we're seeing in the patch notes of PTR 2.7.3, you want the festering to be almost always and at least an 80%, if not a one-floor clear, right? There was a time when I actually had, um, well, actually, why, why did I say that phrasing? I actually have a, a a video that I used to play sometimes at the start of my stream where I showed a furnace that I did a GR120 furnace, a speed GR for season 23 uh, on the Firebird Wizard where I got the furnace map and that furnace map gave me 80% progress, like 81 I think. I mean, I can jump to it. This one. So it's like 80, 81 to 85 percent. Every other. So in this video, I'm 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 talking like a squirrel because I sped up the I sped up the the video okay. to turn it into like a, like a, a short clip, a shorter clip. So I got the zombies that people are talking about, right? I got the zombies. This is season twenty three. I got the zombies that people are talking about. And season 23, I actually okay. played a that more did, meta. Uh, well, 99% meta because I don't play the Frost Nova version, as you can see. I, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't play the Frost Nova in the, in the thing. But this is a, quote, speed oh, GR anyway. Stunned. It's only a 120. But I got, like, quote, the ideal. Well, I mean, I guess the affixes may not be the best. So it's not ideal in that sense. But... When you see my percent progress later down the road, as I'm talking about this, you would think that this furnace is going to be like terrible. Anything but wait till you see yes, at the okay. end of this video. By the end of this video, you will see what I talked about in the overlay right there that it says best furnace map RNG mob types ever. Because there are like a lot of zombies and grotesques that people want. But it's a one floor that gave me 85 well, between 80 to 85 percent, and it's not okay, festering. It's not explosions. battlefield of eternity. It's not the godly spire. It's not. It's not a map that people would normally expect okay. to get about 80 percent. Nice spot here too. This is or, a really or, nice furnace, or even by the way. above 60 percent. So, but this is like amazing, right? I try to keep this video because. This is like partially the 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 monster types that people look for. I mean, people may not enjoy grotesque explosions, but uh, there are some classes and some builds that you could actually tank explosions, okay. and Wizard is one of them. And so, based on percent progression, you should definitely kill 
uh, grotesques. And that's what I did. And you can see, look at this. This is a furnace map. This is a really nice furnace. Yeah, exactly. This 40%. is a really nice furnace. It's, and I'm it's, almost done. I'm still going. I thought I was almost done. Like right there, I, you, you hear me talking like a squirrel because I sped up the video. Okay, I took a really oh, I didn't bad damage that that there. Was a because, lot of damage. Yeah, that was a lot I'd of damage for uh, grotesque explosions. But I think oh, that I was like about seven of them or something. But anyway, oh, look I'm at that. I, I, thought it, I thought I was done with this map. But I'm not, I that was the exit. and it's and it's almost fifty percent by now, and again I'm talking oh, about eighty percent on this floor one, and and you're like, it how is, is that possible? Well, this is crazy. Just treat this like an Oryx dream. Treat this like an Oryx dream. So, I mean, Furnace is not gonna be the one of the best maps, but just imagine, imagine this was one of the four top maps. Or the top five maps, right? And I got zombies and grotesques, which is what you want. So whatever the elites might be, that's a different story. So it might not match up to what healthy. an or extreme is like. But just imagine this, right? Just imagine this. I'm still going. The map is still not. It hasn't ended yet. This is season 23. All this right. was season 23. Right here, being crazy. I went back for this elite because I wanted to know whether I was ending nope. the rift it's yet. Not. I mean, the, the, the floor yet. But I wasn't, so I went back for it. Because I was taking quite a while to kill these Punishers initially. Right, so I thought I, I was thinking to skip, but then I ended up going back for it. Because I was like, I have so much time that. on this speed GR right. that... I, I really want to just keep going. Wow. And I'm not done. Like, it's still going. <laughs> really? Right? So, this is like, this is an example of a possibility that in your Speed GR 120, that you get one of these um, curated list of monster type, monster compositions, where you get zombies wow. and grotesque. And then this map is still going. It's like, it's What's like one of those here? five 67%. minute. It's like one of these five-minute furnace layouts. Like you spend literally five minutes inside the furnace. And you're like, I want to be done out of here. I want to know what my floor two is. Because normally, even a speed GR, unless oh, unless you I'm get doing. like a one floor version of Festering Woods or <laughs> Battlefield I, or something. Am I seriously finishing one floor? I think I just jinxed it though. Yeah, I probably jinxed it, right? It, it it would have been like a close to a one four furnace, but it I don't I don't know if it has happened. It, it probably has because you know there are billions of runs that have been done. Well, I just say billion, but in any case, just imagine imagine that this is a possibility that a furnace could be a hundred percent by one floor, and this is close. This got really close. So, look at that. One floor eighty five percent. So I got a bad floor too, which which tells me that this is not a dreamlike rift, right? But imagine if that's a well, furnace. Well, disembodied hulks here. So disembodied hulks isn't bad, but the lacuni huntresses that were uh, or, or or like the other mob types are like terrible, right? So imagine if that if this was not the case, if 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 this uh, monster type was not lacuni huntress with right. uh the 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 angels and 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 winged assassins okay. and whatnot. Uh so instead of those, it could be hulks and chickens. The only problem or is that that mob type is very like running around a lot. Yeah. So so but but I did get a conduit here at the end here, and this is floor two. Now the first floor again, it was, it was once again. It was it was once again um, the furnace. I call it the furnace, map. So. Okay. This is a gr 120. So imagine if if of that was course, a push, right? Imagine this if guy. that was a push for my GR131 like, this season. It would have been a decent a run. like 70% roughly for one furnace. If I were to consider that combination, it would have been a 70% for my GR131. If I did it correctly, of course. Right? So, you see, that was like, this is a very good speed gr 120 that had a reasonable monster type 
So based on this curated list of maps that we're going to be or about to see down the road uh, in the next few days uh, when we do PTR testing uh, or, or if, if we're just going to watch other people that this is this 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 might be you know something to look out for like like again I can show it again it's a furnace and I don't have very high damage at at the time that I got this it's like Paragon thousand one hundred something right uh, so or or thirteen hundred I don't I don't remember what the okay. yeah whatever you saw there was like my Paragons spot. at the time but just look at this screen with this combination. This is what you normally see in a festering that you would keep and you would actually play. So this is the monster types that you want. So in any case, that's okay. what I was getting at uh, with the curated list of maps and uh, and combinations. So that's for um, that that part of the that part of the topic okay so what else what else is there in this that I want to go through so here it says we wanted to improve the GR experience through quality of life updates balance changes and addressing community feedback we reviewed all of the maps and monsters that appear in GRs and reworked the probabilities overall to make sure players spend more time with the content they enjoy Less spaghetti, more chickens. <laughs> That's a play on, you know, both people who termed it spaghetti or calls them spaghetti maps, like the one that I got, the double spaghetti floors, and more chickens. Uh, there are different plays on that, you know. So, uh, you know, friend streamers and also the monster type that are like amazing and they look like. Imagine chicken wings and stuff, so chickens. Um, yeah. So they have another PTR update for the, the vendor uh, in order to uh, be more specific to uh, what people are going to get. I think they, they made it more specific. 